Praise God, praise God. This is Apostle Dixon. I pray that everything is going all right with you tonight. Hallelujah to his name. Let me go ahead and try to, um, it seemed like it kind of went down a little bit. Okay, praise God. Hallelujah. Go ahead, tag, and share some, share please. I'm going to have to get something to hold it. Ooh, this is crazy. All right, praise God, praise God. I hope that you guys are doing great tonight. Hallelujah to his name. Praise God, praise God. So um, if you know anything about my title, go ahead and it is Spiritual Discernment. It's a must in this last hour. Hello, everybody. I'm sorry. I'm just, you know, uh, for the anointing of God, so I'm just going in. It is so imperative that you have the Spirit of God in this last hour, people. That's why there's so much death, and it may be death on life in your instance. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. But let me go ahead and read this scripture by Zechariah. Zechariah 4, 6, and I always come out of the King James Bible. He says, Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, so, I'm sorry, Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, said the Lord of hosts. And that is... Zechariah 4, 6. Let me tell you something. We live in the last days. I know a lot of people don't like to hear it, but we live in the last days. You cannot just do what you want to do. You have to go to God. You have to seek God on everything and everybody. I, I keep reiterating this and I'm going to keep on doing it. When I taught the prophetic classes and I live this way right now, when I meet somebody or I have a decision to make or anything... I'm going straight to God. God, what do you say? I'm going to prayer. I'm fasting. And when you meet people, always ask this. Say, God, who is this before me? Did you send them or did the enemy send them? And then act accordingly. You know, my heart goes out to the family of that young lady, that young baby that had died. But I knew when I heard that, um, when I heard the whole story, talking about somebody had took the little girl, I knew he was lying. But we wait and look what happened. Mothers, you can't be so desperate for a man to where you leaving your child with a man that you don't even know. It's about spiritual warfare. I don't know why these churches, well, I know why these churches ain't teaching it because they're so busy doing the prophetic. Um, they want to get on here and do prophetic calls. They, they want to tell you. Can I tell you why I don't, I, I used to do prophetic calls. In case you don't know, in 2015, as a matter of fact, that's when people really begin to know me. The ones that have been following me, let me tell you how a lot of people start knowing me. In 2015 and 2016, God had me doing prophetic calls. And trust me, it was on the money. Some of them were recorded. I'm going to try to find those recordings and put them on Facebook. And it would wear me out because I was really being used by God. And it was authentic. That was something that God told me to do. I'm going to be honest with you. I really didn't even want to do it because it would wear me out. Like I would be so sick and tired in my body because I, I, I'm, I, the Lord is using me for two hours. It would drain me. I'm going somewhere. Oh, I'm about to make some of you mad. There is no way that you can get on these calls and be as clean looking as some of them be on here because it wears you out. I wouldn't do it like like this. I would do it. I had a system and I had a whole team helping me. It would, it would be over the phone. I couldn't do it in person because you wouldn't trust me. I'd be so sweaty because the spirit of God, let me tell you something. Even when I get on here, y'all see how I be sweating. So I'm going somewhere. I'm going somewhere. When the spirit of God is moving you, your flesh cannot take it. I'm going to say it again. Your flesh cannot take it. So when they're up on these calls, they lying to y'all because they're looking all good. That's a lie before God. Because I'm telling you, it will wear me out. As a matter of fact, even when I did the morning calls, if anybody that followed me, I used to be so sweaty and we, it was 30 minutes. I had to take a shower because the spirit of God would just wear me out flesh, fleshly. Not my spirit. My spirit would be ready to go another two, three hours. But your flesh, oh, I'm going somewhere. I'm going to teach y'all something tonight. The real spirit of God wears out your flesh. So how in the heck they can be on here prophesying, looking all cute, looking all good. Somebody lying. Oh, yeah, I must tell the truth up in here. They lying to y'all. So y'all sitting up there looking looking, looking at them, and, and, and it's definition. Because I'm telling you, as a prophet, when you flowing, you start, man, you start looking real sweaty and everything else. Because the power of God is being, you're being used. It's not even you. Oh, come on, somebody. Y'all ain't ready for me. 
And all I'm saying is that in this last hour, y'all gonna have to stop having itching ears. If and I'm gonna tell you why God even took me from even doing the classes. In this last hour, and this is a thus said the Lord, in this last hour, God is calling y'all to himself. God don't want no in-between man. Y'all ain't ready for me. Yes, we are to tell you what thus said the Lord. Yes, if, if God give us a word for you. But God is calling every last one of you to himself because guess what? We getting ready to go home. So he wants you to know his, he wants you to know him for yourself and y'all still have those itching ears. And anytime you got to pay for a prophecy, you know, it ain't real. Oh, I'm about to tell them something. Lord, they ain't going to like it. Let me tell you something. They sitting up here talking about PayPal. Me pay, that's not God. I have never given a prophecy and then told y'all to give me some money. That is not of God. As a matter of fact, I call you a fake prophet because that's what you are. P-R-O-F-I-T, fake prophet. Sitting up there asking for money while you prophesying. You a liar. Yeah, I said it. I hope y'all share it and tell all of them what I see. That's right. Now let me get back to what God was saying. I don't know why he made me go there. It must be for somebody. When he Stop giving y'all money to them school says. God is going to do it for you himself. God is calling the body of Christ to himself in this hour. Ain't no more middle man. The only middle one is Jesus the Christ, the mediator. Come on somebody, hallelujah to his name. That's what's happening. So let's get back to the hand. At hand, right what God is saying. In this hour. You got to learn God's voice like never before. Spend time with him, people. Because I'm telling you, children are dying that shouldn't be dying. People are dying that shouldn't be dying. I'm not saying, listen to me, understand me. I know we all got to die. Don't get that, don't get it twisted. But some of this stuff could be avoided. Because let me tell you something. If you have the spirit of God, then you know something is a lie. You know somebody ain't right. You know not to go. You know not to do this. You know not to accept somebody into your life. But when you have no spiritual wisdom and discernment, anything goes. And the enemy can trick you. The enemy can. And what does he come to do? Steal, kill, and destroy. I don't know what part about that y'all don't understand. The enemy is not your friend. And in this last day, he wants everybody to go to hell with him. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Literally. And he's sending people in. He's sending people in. Let me tell you something else too. Whatever sin in your life, that's where you're going to have a problem at. Oh, I'm about to go here. I'm going to teach you some things tonight. If you have a problem with lust, you're going to always have a physical problem with your eye. Y'all not ready for me. If you have a problem with stealing, your body going to hurt. Whatever sin that you're doing... Your body reflects it. I'm saying something to you because I bet you don't know that. Start thinking about it. Any sin, even if it's sexual sin, you'll start having something wrong. Don't you understand what the enemy, that is called that you have given him permission to touch you. Every time you sin, you give the devil permission to touch you. And actually you you put God back, Jesus Christ back on the um, cross. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying? Hallelujah to his name. So we have a church. And I keep saying this for a reason. That's unchurched. They're not teaching y'all this because, number one, they're after that money. Number two, some of them can't. Some of them scared. They're 501c, 501, 501c, 501, 501c, whatever. I don't have one, so I hope I'm not saying it wrong. But if I am, whatever. But the point is this. My main point on here tonight, please get to know God, people. Spend time in your word. Spend time in that Bible. I'm not saying don't go to church, but most of these churches are shysty these days. They just want your money. Because if you ain't growing, then you shouldn't be going. Oh, come on, somebody write that in the comments. And, and guess what? How about that? Go tell them that. If you ain't growing, then you shouldn't be going. But y'all are go sit up in there. Oh, Pastor preached. Oh, he did. Pastor ain't did nothing but what he did last Sunday and Sunday before and Sunday before. Because if you're not growing, and if those sins are not getting broken, and them yokes not getting broken, come on somebody, and your spirit is not getting, I'm talking about really girded in the spirit. Y'all got to seek for people that have the spirit of God. I'm not saying perfect, because ain't nobody perfect. Not me, not you, not nobody. But somebody that's striving to do what God have called them to do. And you know who they are. Don't play with me. Hallelujah. But birds of a feather flock together. I say it. Because when you really love God, you don't want anybody just to speak into your life. As a matter of fact, ain't nobody could just speak into your life not when you really want God. Because guess what? You know that this is your lifeline. And I can't help nobody playing with my lifeline because this is how I'm going to live and this is how I'm going to die. Hallelujah to his name. Nobody playing. Too many people dying. That's what the Lord told me to say. 
Too many people dying without Christ. Too many people dying that don't know God because they didn't adhere. I'm going to tell y'all a story. And I got so many of them. I know I do. I'll tell you. I think before I die, God going to make me tell everything. <laughs> I would have did so much if I'd have known that. But I got to tell y'all this. What happened to me. I was in California. I was in Sacramento. And every story I tell y'all is true. I promise you. And I probably have a witness. Because, you know, I always have a witness. And um, this is before I was truly, like, surrendered to God. Because I always loved God. I've been with God 23 years. But the first half, I played. I ain't going to lie. I was, I was, I was, I, that's how I know the people playing. I was doing all kind of stuff. And I never forget, I was getting ready to go on this date with a guy in um, Oakland, California. And when I got in the car, oh, what that is, y'all, excuse me. Oh, oregano. <laughs> I was eating the, um, whatever. But anyway, I, I got in the car and my spirit began to shake and I really began to cry. And I had never felt nothing like that and it scared me. I can't lie to you, it scared me. And I said, God, what's going on? And God said, Deanna, you know, if you, your spirit know if you go, you'll never come back here alive. I called that guy and I said, don't call me no more. I don't want to talk to you no more. I had never felt nothing like that in my whole life. And I'm not kidding. That scared me. I would never forget that day. And when I prayed, I said, God, what was going on? He said, Deanna, you didn't know that guy from Ada Apple just because he looked good. He had a good income. He had a nice home. He said, but he was a killer and he was going to kill you after he do what he had to do to you. Y'all, I ain't been the same since. I don't care who it is. I ain't going if God don't say go. I ain't going if God don't say go. You can talk about me if you want. You can say what you want. Hallelujah. I know I got to go out, but I ain't going back out stupid. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And I'm not calling anybody stupid, but I'm saying we're making stupid choices. You got to, you, hallelujah, I hear you, God. We can't do this without God. Too many people trying to do this with God, without God. I don't care if you have a doctorate, if you have a PhD, everything, divinity, um, whatever, all kind of titles. It does not matter if you do not have the spirit of God, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of discernment. You're going to get God out here because the devil is taking a lot of people. He conning them. He sexually abusing them. He mentally abusing them. Spiritual witchcraft. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. All kind of stuff is going on. So God is saying, come closer to me in this hour. You're going to need me. You're going to need me like you never have before. And I guess some of you say, well, how do we do that, Apostle? By being real with God. I say, God, I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to do it. As a matter of fact, I mess up at doing it. But just keep me every day, God. And that's all you got to do is just be real. A lot of people say, I don't even know how to pray to God. Or God don't. God talk to us every day. And I'm going to blow your mind because I'm going to tell you how he talks to you every day. Do you know that when you're sleeping, that you're in a state of comatose, which is near death? And you can Google it and find out. So that means every morning that God bless you with the gift of life. That angel is standing. And yes, everybody have angels, like literally angels standing by your bed. And God say, touch her. <laughs> Touch him, and then you wake up. Or you thought you just woke up on your own. So right then and there, it was a blessing from God. That's why when you wake up in the morning, thank you, God, for waking me up. Thank you for the gift. What am I supposed to do today? And that's why you're supposed to glorify God, because guess what? Some people, he ain't going to say touch him. He's going to say, no, they're coming home with me. Y'all don't hear what I just said. So how are you going to say that God don't talk to you? So now... This is what you have to do. You have to develop a relationship with God. God, I just thank you for waking me up. God, I thank you for keeping me. You have to talk to God, but also you have to listen. A lot of people don't teach like this. Not just, God, you know, I need my bills paid. Or, God, I need a, a blessing. Or, God, I need a husband or a wife. You have to talk to God, but then you have to sit down and listen. And you start hearing it. And, and let me let me make it clear. A lot of people say, well, that's me. No. And, and science has really messed up a lot. They got y'all thinking, oh, that's subconscious. Let me tell you something. There's two voices, God and the devil. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. That inner voice, that low voice, that's God. That rough, bodacious voice sometimes, that ain't God. God has a sweet, gentle. The Holy Spirit is very sweet and gentle and will lead you in righteousness and peace. And how you know it's God? Because he will always tell you to do the right thing. The other voice is going to tell you to do the wrong thing. What you talking about? Easy, right? So now you have to develop that relationship every day. And even if it's just 20, 30 minutes, get in your Bible. Start reading your Bible. Get on your knees. Get on your face. Start praying to God. Because y'all going to have to, I'm telling you, that's if you want to survive. And better yet, when we do die, at least you know that you have a chance to make it to heaven. Because the Bible says that even the righteous should scarcely make it. Scarcely. Do you understand what I'm saying? So that means this thing is not going to be easy. Joshua 1.8. 
As a matter of fact, verse 9 says, meditate on this book day and night, and then thou should make thy way prosperous. Make, that let you know right there, opposition is coming. Opposition is going to be in your way. A lot of people just don't want to fight. Can I tell you something? Even if you don't fight, the devil's fighting you every day. So it does not matter. It is time for you to fight. But you have to fight in the spirit. You can't fight acting crazy. You can't fight with this tongue. You can't. You, no, no, no. That's flesh. You got to fight in the spirit. In the spirit. In the spirit. God be my eyes. God be my ears. God let me guard my gates. God lead me. God keep me. Lead me in the way I should go. He, the Bible says that the steps of a righteous man is ordered. You want God to order your steps. And know it ain't going to always be some nice steps. And know it ain't going to always be some easy steps. But you want God to guide you instead of the devil. I'm going to say it again. Too many people dying without God. God says my people, they perish for lack of wisdom and knowledge. I am literally telling you, you can do this. It's not going to be easy. But you got to come to God in this last hour. All Christians. And I pray that y'all stop playing. Oh, I'm about to say something. It breaks my heart when I see young or old people moving themselves away from God. They have a young lady from my hometown. I'm about to go here. I saw her throw up the Baphomet sign. Yeah, I'm saying it. Y'all knew I was going to say it. And I wish you, I, please get in touch with me. I'm going to tell you what. I don't play. So, I know for a fact where you come from under and what troops you come from under. So now you're throwing up Baphomet signs because you think you're famous now? Girl, you can't play with them demons that them people finna put on you. Y'all better catch your head. You, you want to be famous. I know. Huh, huh. Them demons will eat you up alive without God. Y'all better understand what's going on here. God first. Not money. Not fame. Not this. Not that. Choose wisely, people. Choose wisely, because death is real. And eternal fire is real. Hallelujah to his name. We cannot do this without God. And I don't know why y'all keep trying. I used to, too, going around and around in circles until I finally realized it was me, it wasn't God. Unless you make a conscious decision to surrender to God, you're going to do and keep hitting your head. And that's insanity, right? Doing the same thing, trying to think for something different or wish for something different or hope for something different. You're going to have to do it God's way. And a lot of people don't want to. You won't do what you want to do. And you're going to get hit every time. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Tell them what God say. Whoo, I feel the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. So that's all God told me to say. I'm going to do another video. Um, My spirit is very vexed right now. Too many people getting hit. The church not teaching y'all spiritual warfare. The church not teaching. It's not authentic anymore. And we know the great falling way will come. But it's here. And I'm telling you what God say. Just get close to him. Just try every day. Every day. Every day. You're going to have to fight every day. I said it before. Fight every day. All right. God bless you. God keep you. This is Apostle Deanna Dixon. Real life soldiers. For that is who we are. God bless.